Hello and welcome to Hoffman Photography. My name is Rainer and in today's video I'll show you everything you need to know about the histogram and how to interpret it. And then you'll hopefully agree with me that the histogram is the best invention since fitted sheets. One of the really nice things in digital photography is a possibility to review your image on the display and to check the exposure. Brilliant. We all do that, don't we? But in fact, checking the exposure by looking at that tiny image on the display is not very reliable at best. Indoors, the image looks bright and clear. Outdoors on a sunny day, you can hardly see it on the screen. And on top of that, you can adjust the brightness level of the display. And that, of course, affects how bright or dark the image appears on the screen. Therefore, the display hardly ever shows you whether the exposure is correct or not. This is where the histogram comes in handy. Since the histogram is a mathematical representation of the tonal values in an image, it's completely independent of lighting conditions and the brightness settings of the display. This is how the histogram looks on Canon cameras. On your camera it will probably look differently, but the general appearance should be roughly the same. So let's have a closer look at the histogram. But first, here is a verbal definition of what a histogram is. Yes, I know that sounds a bit alien, but it will become clear in a moment. So let's start at the beginning and let's assume for the sake of simplicity that the world is black and white with some gray in between. Here we go. Here we have a completely empty histogram, so let's fill it with some life. On the left hand side of the histogram, all the completely black pixels are shown. I've indicated this by a small black triangle. On the right hand side, we have the completely white pixels. So it's a white triangle, of course. And in the middle, we have the medium gray pixels. Now, in the digital world, every tonal value, every brightness value has, of course, a number assigned to it. And black pixels, or now let's say black, is usually denoted with a zero. And white is 255. Accordingly, medium gray is 128. So, in our normal digital pixel pictures, sorry, we have 256 different brightness values. 256 because, of course, the zero counts as a brightness value. Now, let's assume that in our picture there are a few completely black pixels. Then there is a vertical bar representing the number of pixels that are completely black. And maybe there are some completely white pixels. And again, there's a small vertical bar that represents the number of white pixels. And then, of course, we may have quite a lot medium gray pixels. And as you can see, the higher the bar, the more pixels have this brightness value. How many pixels that are, we don't know and we don't care. Because that's just depending on your camera and on, on the, the subject you photographed and so on. So how many pixels that are, we don't care. It's not important. Now for every one of those 256 brightness values, there will be a vertical bar in the histogram. And, well, 
I've shown a few, not all of them, of course, but that's how it works. And again, the higher the bar, the more pixels do have a certain brightness value. And just to get this out of the way, it may happen that some of the vertical bars touch the upper limit of the, of the histogram. Never mind, that's not a problem. It's just a mathematical thing. So don't worry about that. What is important for us are the extreme left hand side pick of the histogram. And you guessed it, the extreme right hand side of the histogram. That's what counts. Now, if we have a very high bar like this, at the left hand side, it means we do have lots of black pixels. And I show you in a minute what that means. And if we have a large bar at the right hand side, it consequently means we do have a lot of completely white pixels. So all we care about is what happens at the right end of the histogram and what happens at the left end of the histogram. Whatever goes on in between, we don't care. It depends only on the subject. So we don't just, we just are not interested in what happens in here. So far so good, but now let's have a look at some real world examples. And I'm pretty sure then it will be really clear why you should, once in a while at least, check the histogram on your camera. This is an average subject. Well, actually it's a, quite a nice subject, but it's average in terms of tonal values. And if we have a look at the histogram, you see it's nicely spread out over the complete histogram from totally black to totally white, but there are very few, if any, completely white pixels and there are very few, if any, completely black pixels. So that's a nice average histogram. But this image here is completely different. There are large areas where we don't have any detail. It's just going black in these areas here. This image is underexposed and this shows in the histogram. There is a very high vertical bar at the left hand side of the histogram. So that means lots and lots of pixels are completely black. So these areas over here mostly where we can't see any detail. And what's also evident in the histogram is that the very right tonal values, very, very light gray and complete white is missing in this image. And that shows in um, the clouds over here, there is nowhere real white in those clouds. They are just very light gray. So this image actually is, is underexposed, evident by that very high bar at the left hand side. Now the next image is a very dark image, granted, but if you look closely, you can see, even in the darkest areas of the image, you can see details. There's nothing that's just pure black, as in the image before. And if you have a look at the histogram, then you'll see the difference. There is no high bar at the left hand side, but, but we have, of course, lots of very dark pixels. That's why the hill, so to speak, is on the left hand side of the histogram. And we have only very few, very light pixels evident here. But the deciding factor is that we don't have a vertical, a high vertical bar at the left hand, left -hand side of the 
histogram. So that means we can see all the detail in the dark areas of the image. This image, though it's dark, is not underexposed. It is just an image where the dark pixels are the majority. And such an image is called a low-key image. This image is clearly overexposed, as you can see in the clouds. The clouds are just a big, wide area. We are talking about blown out highlights in this case. So there is no detail on, in, the, in the clouds. There's just a big, wide area. And this shows, of course, in the, in the histogram. And in this case, we have a high peak right at the extreme right um, end of the histogram. And that's all these clouds, these white areas here. And the very dark pixels are missing. That's not a big problem that can be solved easily, but in this case, it shows that there is nowhere in the image real black. No big deal in this case can be recovered in post-processing, so no big deal, but the blown out highlights, that's a big problem because you can't recover detail in blown out highlights, no chance. So this image is overexposed. This one is a very bright image, of course, it's a snowy landscape, but it is not overexposed and you can easily see that in the histogram. Again, no high bar on the, right, on the right hand side. The hill, the majority of the pixels is light gray. And that is to expect it when we have a snowy landscape. This image, as I've said before, is not overexposed. But the majority of the tonal values are in the very bright tonal values. And this image is a typical high key image. This one is a bit of a problem because you can see that the sky is again a blown out area, no details visible in here. And at the same time, we have very dark areas that don't show any detail. And this is simply a subject that has a very high contrast, such a high contrast that the image sensor couldn't cope with it. And it's you can see it here in the histogram. We have a very high bar at the left-hand side on the the black pixels, so many, many black pixels. And at, its, at the same time, we have many, many white pixels, a high bar at the extreme right of the histogram. So this is a high contrast image, and this unfortunately happens quite often. It happens easily when you are inside a building and you take a photograph where a window is uh, visible and outside it's it's a bright sunny day perhaps and inside it's fairly dim and then this happens this is a limit of the sensor itself if you go through all your images you'll probably see quite a lot of them there's little that can be done to remove that problem you could if you say okay i want to have detail in, in the sky, then you could uh, reduce the exposure time or close the aperture somewhat more to recover the highlights. But then, of course, at the same time, you would lose detail, even more detail in the shadow areas, in the dark areas of the, of the image. Or you could say, I'm more interested in what the room looks like inside. And you could increase the exposure time or uh, open the aperture somewhat. And then you would recover the details in the dark areas. But of course, then 
um, the, the sky outside and the landscape outside would be even more overexposed. Or you could use a flash unit and then try to lighten up these dark areas here inside. The third possibility would be to do an HDR image, but that's a special thing and perhaps I'll make a video on that. Okay. Now, when I said that we don't want a big, a high vertical bar on the right side of the image, uh, then that is only true for large bright areas like sky, like the sky, like the clouds, for example. But if you look at this car, you see very bright highlights, sun reflections on, on the chrome parts and, uh, and so on. And of course, that's quite okay. And you can see this in, in the histogram. There is, of course, a bar on the right side, but it's not a very high one. That means not very many pixels are just white. It's just the reflections on the car and on the chrome parts here. And that's quite okay. That's exactly what we want. That's because the reflection of the sun is always so bright that, of course, it will be completely white in an image. So that's fine. The histogram is probably the most helpful feature in digital photography. And I would like to encourage you to get familiar with it. I hope this helped and thanks for watching.